Hi, this is Garvey Campbell, and you are watching Carnival Network. We are on the Soka Sofa with... Three Tang Green Monarch out of Grenada, Carrick One Pity Matnik, Short Pre. You're watching the Carnival Network. You take over the sofa, we call it the Soka Sofa. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've come up uh, to London to help us celebrate the 43rd year of Grenada's independence. Um, for the people who aren't familiar with who you are and what you do, can you just tell them a little bit about your background and where you're from? Well, I'm entertainer, songwriter, performer, definitely out of the smaller island of Grenada. Okay. It's called Karaku, and we still have a smaller one called Pidimatnik, but okay. I'm, I'm from the second biggest. <laughs> All right, okay. Only, only 7,500 people live on Karaku, you know, so definitely come... A little dot on the map, okay, but big when it comes to soca music. We're definitely so. I'm gonna definitely try and get some background on um, some more background on where you're from because I find that I've been to Grenada, I've not been to Karaku in all honesty, but I am gonna yeah. come. Most, most, yeah, I'm definitely most. gonna come. <laughs> you, as well as performing in London, you also performed in um, in Huddersfield as well, yeah, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Can you just tell us what the vibe was like up there, how you were received, and you know, how well, Huddersfield. As I was expecting, most of the people that came basically are those whose family or know some people from Karaku. So it was like a Karaku affair. Because mm -hmm. Huddersfield is Karaku strong, Pity Matnik strong. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can tell. I don't know why that is. I, I've been to Huddersfield Carnival now um, on four, four or five occasions. And that place just looks like mini. Mini Karaku, Mini Grenada. Yeah, <laughs> I think like back in the days, like when um, a lot of Grenada Karaku people used to come to London. Yes. Before preferring the USA. Right. And then most of them had family like in Huddersfield, Bedford. Okay. So that's where most of them end up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you guys get a chance, if you're watching this, you get a chance to go Huddersfield Carnival. Make sure you check it out. It's, it's a lot of fun out there, man. So, um, again, for the people who don't know a lot about Karaku. Um, can you just tell them a, a little bit more about it, its relationship to Grenada, what it's like over there? Well, it's, Grenada is a tri-island state, for those who don't know. Grenada okay. is not just one island. The, right. The entire country is three islands. Right. Karaku, to get there, you, you have a small plane, which mm -hmm. takes like 18 minutes. From Grenada? Yeah, or okay. a okay. ferry. The ferry takes like an hour and a half, like an hour, four to five minutes. Okay. You get to Karaku, everybody know, you know you're coming, or everybody knows you as soon as you reach. Wicked, wicked, wicked. <laughs> um, so I, I I watched um I was watching a video of um Carnival which I thought was Grenada in my in my ignorance <laughs> and <laughs> and then I checked the video and I'm I seen Karaku and I'm like so the 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 carnival looks the same yeah. so um as well as um it it it's it sharing culture it looks like you guys share a hell of a lot in terms of um, all, all three of the islands. Um, where, where, how does that, that, that work in terms of the culture in Grenada, in Karaku, is there any differences or is it pretty much? For the carnival the season, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah, but for other, there is a lot of festivals in Karaku. They have the Maroon Festival. Okay. They have the Regatta Festival. Okay. And okay. they have the Parang String Band Festival. Parang. So <laughs> par Parang, for the people who don't know, um, that's the music that we have in the Caribbean when we're Christmas celebrating time. Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's not just it's, it's not, not ju it's not just okay. soca. We have different types of music in the Caribbean. If um, you didn't know, so um, we'll move on to finding a little bit more about you. So while we were we were digging around and doing our research for this interview. Um, we found out that you were involved in athletics and you were somewhat successful in athletics. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, that's my give back program to, okay. to the community. I decided to work with kids, okay. especially sports. When I was younger, I was really good in sports. Yeah, that's, 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 what, we, that's what we found out. Yeah. Us about. I just did, we just never had coaches. You know, when I was in school, the same teachers who used to teach you, when they finish in the evening, probably do the paperwork. They come for like a 20 minutes just to like help you out or whatever. Okay, okay. And then a lot of the talents got wasted along the way. Okay. Yeah, so I decided my give back program is going to be focused on kids. Okay. Focus on sports. So we have the, the biggest football soccer tournament in Karaku is my, my, um, okay. my program. Okay. And then the track and field program with the kids. Okay. So you're, you're, you're actually helping, you're reaching back and Different. helping bring some of the... 
yes. the people forward. Very, very good, very good. I like it, like it. And, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not simple, it's not a joke, because we boast the best athletes in the entire country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not just for Karaku, but for the entire country. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw, I think it was, it was last year, uh, Lewis Hamilton um, came over. I, th I think he was in Grenada, but he, he, was, he was saying that um, there's a lot, of, a lot of talent, a lot of talent in Grenada, Karaku. Um, and it just needs it just needs nurturing. Yes, definitely. It just needs definitely. nurturing opportunities. You know, a lot of we need a lot more focus on t bringing in things to help them develop. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, so for for the people who don't know, how long have you been in the music business? Sixteen years, basically. Sixteen. Started two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I used to be singing Talpi songs, like performing everywhere. Okay. He never got an opportunity to meet me until he came to Karaku to do a concert. Okay. And then he was like, the youth man that does sing, sing like me, where is him? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, they set up from the, came up from the crowd, mm -hmm. mash up the place using his songs. Right. And then he was like, if you're so good like Talpi and could do everything like Talpi from tonight, you will shot me. So he named you? Yeah, that was it from there. And that was it? <laughs> So you had your name. Um, where where did you go from there? Did did you with, from there was it? Did you did you make a transition in your in the way that you approach your music career from that day? No, not really. It was um, Zingo, who's another senior artist from Grenada. Okay. He came on the same show with Talpri, and then when I came down the stage, he was like, "I will make sure that your talent ain't go wasted." <laughs> and then when he went back to Grenada, he stopped to his word. He write. First song I ever did. Okay. Dose a capital pre Zingo and Talpi training me. Right, right. And then right. he called me on the telephone and singing the melodies for me, and that's how we started. And from there. So it was somebody else that made show that that, you, that uh, took it serious. That's wicked, yeah. man. So um, your because of that, would you say that your relationship with uh, with Talpri based on that is different from some of the, the relationship you've got with other soca artists or? Is your relationship with Talpri pretty much the same? Because I kind of noticed that the artists from Grenada, from Karaku, they have friendly rivalry, but they pretty much help out each other quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, definitely. We, we hold our own. Yes. We, we say what we say, well, but nobody takes it personal. Mm -hmm. Anywhere we go is like brothers and sisters, you know. We hotel, we're in the hotel together. We don't really segregate ourselves from one another and all that stuff at all. Wicked, yeah. wicked. So, um, yeah, t tell us. Uh, we we saw a string of um, competitions that you've won. I mean, it just looks like you're just mashing up competitions. Can you just tell them, um, tell people who are watching um, about the very first competition that you won, and then about some of the some of the others? Because well, the first year that Zingo gave me the song, it won it won the road match, the most popular song. Right. right. So from there, I was kind of like high in glory. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Grenada the same year. Got okay. first year and got into the Soka Monarch National Finals. Wicked. So he started off, off the bat. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I have an idea of getting, getting it a little quick off the start. Right. But right, then right. you have to maintain or you're going yes. to drop, up, drop off. To, yeah. So yeah. there was that point for me to where, you know, I had to take a step back and, you know, wonder if I really want it or not. If I was there for the glory or if I was, because being there for the glory was making me broke. Because you have okay. to maintain a certain lifestyle too. And then you're not oh. taking the, the art form serious, you're not practicing enough, you're not singing enough, you're not studying the writing enough because you're young and the ladies <laughs> are coming. <laughs> so you got you got so you got a little bit car carried away with it, but you had to rein yourself in because yeah. yeah, I took a few years off. Okay. And then 2007, I made it I made up my mind and say, if I go back 2008, then I'll take it serious. A different mindset. So what was it? What, so in your own words, what, what were the aside from the obvious? What were the main changes that you said that, that that you that you made in order to ensure that this was something that you was consistent at? What should, what were the main changes? First thing I decided to take the writing seriously. Okay. And the me, and the melodies, you know, like before I never appreciate melody. We just chant. Right. So every right, every right. rhythm, even though it's a soca rhythm. You just chant on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that changed, okay. Yeah, and then I listened to a lot of Sparrow, a lot of Michael Jackson. Okay. For like a four-month period, I probably listened to only great artists. I never listened to any more modern song, no modern artists, no. As long as they was not con con seen as a great artist, mm -hmm. I would not listen. 
right. So I only listen to all the great artists from all the great genres. I even listen great genres from rock and pop. Different types of music. Different types of music. Okay. Because it was not about the genre they do. It was about the mindset. Mm -hmm. Seeing what they did. That people say, all right, they are the great ones. Okay. So that, that. It took a while, like a couple, it took almost a year because you have to research, study. you have to listen, you have to study all these things. Study, yep. okay. Yeah. I've got a question about studying later that I've, I've got for you right here, yeah? But the, what would you say um, were maybe two or three things that, were, that you identified that was consistent amongst all of these great artists from different genres of music? Characteristics. Okay. They never sing a song that they don't mean, that they don't feel. Right. When, they, when they're singing a song, you could actually see the story being played out. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so definitely they were on stage and like, you, that is the show right there. Nobody have time to be talking on the, with somebody else about anything because that drama on stage is so unique and so real that mm -hmm. you, you, you're into that performance. Okay, okay. Yeah. You, with regards to your athletics, would you say that your, the success that you had in athletics and your, your drive, had, has any of that carried over into um, your career as a musician? Definitely, definitely. Um, listening to, well, I, I watch more ESPN. Mm -hmm. ESPN is probably one of the most, or maybe the world's most professional sports network. Right, right. So the way that they do the handle the interviews, how they hold the athletes to high standards and stuff, making them they see themselves as role models mm -hmm. instead of just mm -hmm. being stars. You know, that helped a lot. You bring that across. Definitely. That's wicked, man. That's wicked. Can you name a few of your, um, your most successful tunes? I know you've got a lot of music out there. Um, from what I've seen, serious music all the way up and down, wicked music, but can you name a few of your most successful? Well, the first, tunes? the first one I should give point out to was Accident. Because that one, Wicked tune. that one made people start listening to me yes. and seeing me as a different, from a different angle, yeah. different light. Yeah. Then summertime, Spice Island summer yes. came, and then that one took off, took off. Yep. Nice, um, cool, groovy tune. Yep. Plain talk, bad manners. Then I have um, this mass. Okay. Because that was the first ever jab jab song to win any competition. Okay. That stage competition in Grenada. Right, right. They right. never, if you sing a jab jab song before, they don't, they don't ever like see it as right. You know. And I decided to do a Jab Jab song as a groovy, put in some melodies and stuff. And that won the groovy title, so that was something big for me. Did you see that as a bit of a, as a, bit of a, as a, as a risk, doing that? Or, no, or were I, you... And that's the thing I noticed with all the great artists. They don't see things that other people see as a risk. They see it as a barrier that they break. Right. So they, they, want, they want the opportunity to say, yeah, I was the first person to start making <laughs> people pay attention to that. <laughs> nice. Um, aside from soca music, is there any other genres of music that you actually perform? You've oh, definitely. I've, I've done reggae before. Reggae? And good ones, but I never like release on a large scale. Okay. And right now I could do basically any genre. Okay, yeah. okay. But I just, we don't, we don't, I just don't, because I know the other genres, to get there, yes. you have to be known. Yeah, the, yeah. The way to be known is to be the best in your journey or then everybody gonna pay attention and then that allows when you to they push. pay attention then you could push and bridge the gap exactly okay okay um so what artists would you say you draw most of your um inspiration from you've got all of these different um these different artists that you've ob obviously looked at and studied but are there any that um that really stick out to you in terms of like giving you strong inspiration as to how you need to conduct yourself. Mighty Sparrow, uh, okay. for number one, because not only watching him and listening to him a lot, he had spoken to me for like a two and a half hour session. Mm -hmm. And from then I think basically the mindset gone to another level. Okay. okay. Yeah, so Bob Marley. Yes. Yeah, Bob okay. Marley, definitely. Rihanna. Okay, yeah, interesting. Definitely. All Marshall right. Montano. Of course. Marshall Montano is yeah. probably the greatest modern soccer artist. Yeah, yeah he's, so. he's, he's kicking down all kinds of doors definitely. in the US. Um, a good ambassador for the music. So, yeah, so those, yeah. those are, you know, they break barriers. And even though, like, it's sometimes the press try to put them in a, in a negative angle, mm -hmm. they just rise over it all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay. If you were to... This is a bit of an interesting one for me because I've got my own opinion on it, but I, I've always wanted to find out from someone who, from from either Grenada or Karaku who performs music, what, how would you describe what makes the music 
from Grenada, from Karakou, um, different and unique from a lot of the other types of soca from the other islands. It's, it's musical, it's enriched culturally and like historically. Okay. Not, nothing has been a big change or a big gap. The majority of the big artists from Grenada, mm -hmm. they never hook up with no like hip hop studio that tried to put in the EFX or the right. or the kind of right. mixed in. But Trinidad is a 1.3 million population. Yes. And then the other journeys see it as a money making mm -hmm. because they have an industry. Yes. yes. So now a lot of the other people they don't go and try to ask them for soca. They try to get involved in the soca so they could get something out of the soca. Right. Yeah. So. Basically, you hear Trinidad Soca kind of switching mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. some more European and American, or a lot yes. of American yeah, undertones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the American market is trying to tap into Soca because mm. Soca is a non violent Caribbean genre. Right, right, right. So, the, do you think that might lead at some point in the future to a point where Soca music, at least there, might, um, might be? perhaps tainted by what's coming, the influence that's coming in from the outside? Yeah, I mean, they could do it in Trinidad, but they would not get you in Grenada. Right. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you know, like, I'm, I'm at the age where I take this very serious. Yeah. Like, I, I'm taking the lead in Grenada soca music without even being asked to. Mm -hmm. And there is no way we would do that. Right. We, we won't allow somebody else to come out and take, you, you have your culture, bring your culture to us, yes. accept ours. That's the way we see it. You it's know? a cultural exchange. Definitely. We, we would... Leave out America, come to Europe and go to Africa with our music. Yes. Because we know they would appreciate it for what mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. and for what they want to do to it. I find that comes, that comes across strong in the culture. There's a, the pride. It's almost as though there's such high value placed on it. From your, from your, from your perspective, and quite rightly so, in and of itself, it's perfect for what it is. Course, it doesn't need anything else. It doesn't else. need anything else. Yeah. Doesn't need because you come to Grenada for one carnival and then you go back home and you're like, yo, I never even knew their dialect. Why am I having all the songs in my head? You know? <laughs> 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 so that alone tells you. Right. Yeah, it's, it's happy, it's it's catchy. Okay. And the, the beats are crazy because the beats are so African mm -hmm. oriented. And then you put in the modern strings. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So internationally speaking, um, with soca music, it's not as widespread as some other genres, so you're constantly on the to a point to a, on the cutting edge of uh, pushing pushing soca music globally, getting it out yeah. there, yeah. Um, and the soca music industry, as it is anyway, is is a difficult business. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. What would you say motivates you to really keep going, keep pushing, pushing through? When you perform in London, or like. When I perform in Maine in the US okay. for 600 people that probably never even heard me oh, before. Yes. And you get such ovations, then you know the, the music is not the problem. So definitely we we gonna take our time and push the barriers to make sure that we get to the point. Because we, when we get to the point, the music is legitimate enough to stay there. Mm -hmm. So and that and I think that is what's known from some of the other genres or some of the other people that you know where they, when they set up the music industry mm -hmm. they know that so that they will set up barriers to like to have to tap uh, in always right. want a way to tap into yeah, so we it just it's just a matter of time though because i mean the reggae music broke through and yeah 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 and it's everywhere yeah it, it's everywhere now um you know if i speak to people who are unfamiliar with caribbean culture at all the one thing they know about is reggae, reggae music it sticks yeah it sticks. So it that, does it so does. when so when soca breaks you're gonna stick i think africa is one of the markets we should try to hit the hardest yeah because the african people have a lot of rhythm and melodies yes so i think that getting it there for us mm -hmm. will be something very big because Af anything from africa that hits out can hit yeah. europe Reggae music's done done pretty well in um in Africa oh, yes. as well. Um, there's artists who perform reggae. Uh, Two Face Idibia is one of them that I know of. Um, and you listen to his music and it it sounds authentic. It's yeah. it's yeah. real reggae. So um, yeah, definitely a that's definitely a good idea for a lot of soca artists. You'd recommend that soca artists look in that direction. Well, definitely, definitely, definitely. Because you have to know the. the the market you're looking for is people that can can be in your vibe. Mm -hmm. And the African culture, if you listen there as the Zonto style, is close yes. to soccer. So yes. definitely that was something that they would they would like. They would they would definitely. like it. Okay. So I'm gonna 
now talk about um, the carnival in Karaku. Can you tell us, um, actually, while we was doing research on you, we found out that you've done your own research on carnival over here in London at one point. Um, you did that in a library, we understand. I'm not sure how, yeah. how great it is, right? Yeah. Uh, so I want to find out a little bit about that because I found that really interesting that, that you did that. Um, but, but before we get into that, wh what, what drove you to do that? I mean, you took your time out on a trip to London to go to a library and actually do research. So um, where did the motivation for that come from? Well, that, there was the same song that I wanted to write about the Jab Jab. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't want to do a Jab Jab song not understanding what Just Jab Jab was. Right, okay. And then going through, I noticed somebody was pointing out to that the slaves, when they, when they were celebrating the freedom, that they never had anything. So whatever the things that they used to take care of the babies was used as things to store alcohol because oh. they was the one that was doing all, processing all the alcohol anyway, walking the cane fields, getting the rum, so they know where all the rum was stored. Yes. So yes. they never had buckets or barrels on their own, so they was using the, the baby posies, the parties and stuff to store mm -hmm. rum. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, so that's why we, we sell, doing that in Juve, but nobody nobody even knows. We just think it's maybe like a style. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going back to slavery, that, that's something that, that I was handed down. The chain, is some of the slaves were still in chains when yes. the news broke. So sometimes they, they use stones and stuff to break the chains. So some of them was running around in chains, even they was right. free. Yes. yes. A, <laughs> so okay. all that is, so I was realizing that those are even the juves actually this a celebration of the freedom of slavery. Yes, there's proper yeah. mean there's proper meanings proper tied meaning, to it. Definitely. Could be I must admit, like with the the carnival in Karaku and Grenada just look they look crazy. Yeah. 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 Um you see um people with the swordfish in their mouth, the, yep. the, the oil, the, you know, just... The pig. The pig it's, it, yeah. Everything. It's, and, you know, a lot ties back to, because the slaves never had, um, they never had authority to eat meat. Okay. They only ready, ready for the slave masters. So they, okay. they only get fed the things that they're supposed to eat from what they was given. Mm -hmm. So no meat was allotted. They didn't have that. They didn't have that. They didn't have what? that luxury. <laughs> okay, okay. So when the slavery abolished, they run and grab a whole pig to, sh <laughs> to show the master that you didn't want to see it. Yeah. We're we going to take one of your whole pig. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> and, that's, and so now that, that's pretty much so that's a... That's in the Juve still. It's a standard still, part yeah. of... Yep. And every single year that's... Every year you're going to oh, see somebody with probably with a pig head or something in the Juve. So after doing that research, um, how has your view... Well, I suppose it has... How has your view of um, Jab Jab culture changed? Oh, 100%. Yeah, uh, from, from after read, going to the library, I played Jab. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you didn't do it before? But no, I never did, did Jab right. before. I did okay. the colors. But then after that, I played Jab for the first time. Okay. Then I, I was in a band and see Stink Fish. I was like, I'll take the center of the fish. And I know the meaning now. <laughs> <laughs> so would you, uh, for, for people who... Um, aren't familiar with carnival at all because I know some people say you know if you go in carnival you have to warm up first grenade and, and karaoke is a bit it's for some people they describe it as, as, a, as a bit intense I'm not sure if I, I agree with that um, would you recommend karaoke carnival um, as a good option for a first carnival oh yeah definitely okay. definitely okay. karaoke carnival and the reason why because a lot of the things that you might take for granted, mm -hmm. it will be granted. Okay. Like okay. You, you don't have to pay extra attention to how you carry your wallet, okay. how you carry your iPad. Mm -hmm. you, don't have, you don't have to work. You could have your iPad in your hand. You could le leave it on a counter, buy a drink, pick it up five minutes later. And it's cool. And it's there. Nobody will steal your stuff. You drop your wallet. Somebody would tell you, go and put it on the, on the speaker, on the DJ. Somebody drop their wallet, come and claim their ID and it's yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so I watched a, um, a YouTube video um, about Trinidad Carnival and the guy who was talking uh, mentioned something really interesting. He was saying that um, one of the, the, the bits of friction in Trinidad with regards to Carnival is the Mardi Gras side and the side that they call Cambolet. 
Campbell AB in the kind of the, the more street the African, style, yeah. yeah. And then you've got Mardi Gras with the feathers and yeah, the nice, like the that, pretty right? fancy ones, right? Yeah, yeah. So in Grenada and Karakou, they seem to place, un, un, unlike a lot of other places, they seem to place a high uh, value and importance on um, on that that kind of Camboulet kind of street aspect of carnival. Um, are you able to explain why that why that is? I mean, I, when I first went to went to Grenada was where I went to. It was it was new to I enjoyed it, but it was new to me because I was used to seeing more the focus on yep. the the Mardi Gras, the feathers, the this, the, that, the other, and then you had the street festival, which just, just opened it up. So that, can you and that's true because Trinidad is the biggest is the mecca, yeah. and they basically say carnival started in Trinidad. Okay. And they started it with the, with the fanciness. Yes. Because after the slavery abolished, um, they bring in the indentured workers from the Indians. Right. That's, they were the first set of paid workers to come to the Caribbean. Right. So right. they could have portrayed their culture at a faster pace and at a bigger scale more than the slaves who were in the little Grenada, the little mm -hmm. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mm -hmm. The only big slave population was Jamaica and Haiti in the north. Right. And they have they basically could pull their own culture together, which was the reggae music right. and other things like that. So Grenada now they they have this jab jab, which is the rituals of the slave. Mm -hmm. And Grenada had the slaves. When it was abolished, they have no no Indians or indentured workers to bring in no extra. extra. So you just had to build from nothing. Right. But as soon as it get more elaborate and the years go by, and you start to differentiate yourself, then is there is something you have to take. To, to go over those who are bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Trin Trinidad have the Mardi Gras, the fancy mass, yes, big. Yes. So you can't compete with that. Mm -hmm. You have to bring something that is more authentic, more rooted mm -hmm. historically, mm -hmm. make it into something big. Okay. So the jab jab, hearing about it is different than being in it. Mm -hmm. When you play it, you feel a passion. Yes. You know every the meaning of the of having a pig head. It's like a it's like saying, finally we're free, we could we could have our own. Yeah. So definitely it's different. Yeah. The significant, I, I suppose the 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 significance of um, the different aspects of, of how it's played, it brings something. It brings something totally new that I hadn't experienced before. When you know, when when I went over there, it was, and you know, obviously you you kind of look, you you ask people like, why are they, why are they dragging chains? Yeah. Why have they got the the this? Uh, why is this guy dragging his coffin? Yeah. What is that all about? What's with the swordfish and the? Some died. Before when a slave died, they dig, they dig, a, they dig a hole, they bury you in a hole. Just like that. No, just like that. Now the portrayal of the freedom of slavery shows when one of us dies, Massa, look at that. We put one of our own in a coffin. Wow. Just like how you put yours in a coffin. So the dragging of the chain, we drag the chain. We ain't wearing them anymore. Right, right, so right. So it's, it's just it's just a re rebellion of the of slavery and and celebration of the abolition of slavery. Okay. Yeah. Wicked. So the, the the carnival, your carnival is one of the most intense out there that I've oh, I've seen. Definitely. definitely. Um, <laughs> would you recommend it um, for someone who wants to go to a carnival for the first time? Would you recommend uh, Karuku Carnival as a good option for them to to get involved? It is intense. Oh. I've heard some people say, you know, Ooh, them them carnivals there, you you you, you have to watch yourself. But would you recommend it as um, for a first time? Oh, after? definitely. Okay. Yeah. I want people to say watch yourself. I think they mean basically. It's intense. It's, it's intense. Yeah, you have yeah. to be physically fit. Yes. Because you'll be going from one event to the next event to the next mm -hmm. event, and then juve takes a lot out of you. Okay. The old oil, the scent of the oil, the long hours in preparation leading up to the juve because they cook the food that the jab jab jab, jab cook, okay. which is the oil dung, mm -hmm. where you take. Basically, a lot of other ingredients and put it into one pot. Right. So you don't you don't cook the meat separate, you don't cook provision separate. Okay. You cook everything one pot. Okay. And then you share among everybody. Mm -hmm. Then you start to drink up the alcohol, light the fires. Yes. Start the, the slavery chants, mm -hmm. like some of the chants that they use to 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 get, to throw at throw back at the masters to tell them we're free now, you mm -hmm. can't hold mm -hmm. us no more. <laughs> so they do all that ritual and then straight to the juve. Okay. All blacked up, right into the morning, into the hot sun of the early morning. So, so some people say you, you have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so if 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 there were, if I was going to Karaoke for the first time, um, in or out of um, 
the carnival season, what would you say are the five, th five things that I must do, I have to have done before I leave Karaku? What, what are the things that I have to either try or get involved in or do? Num number one, you, gotta, you, you definitely have to go take a tour of the island. Okay, go take a tour. There's a lot of um, historical spots, like lime factories that the slaves used to work and everything. Because okay. Karaku is smaller, mm -hmm. so you can see everything a lot more a lot less time. Right, okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. Then the reefs. Car okay. Uh, Karaku is known as the Isle of Reefs. Okay. So you can dive reefs and any from any direction. You don't have to go to a special to spot. A special spot yeah. You don't have to say the all oh, the best reefs are the north, all the best reefs are in the south. You could choose anyone. Right. So right. Th that the people are like family. You okay. don't you don't have to know them. You don't have to go there before. You don't have to have any family there. Mm -hmm. It's just different. There is a zero crime. There is zero crime rate because nobody. There is no no murders. If a murder happened for mm -hmm. once in ten years, it's like some like it's a big a big, big thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that that that's something we boast very well. Okay, okay. Yeah. For um, the festivals, okay, yes. You go for juve. You go for soca monarch juve. You have to go for carnival because Caraco carnival is even more enrooted, like in the historic part of it, more than Grenada. Mm -hmm. You can not only the Jab Jab, you can get the Shakespeare Mass, right. which is another that was brought there after the slaves, what the Europeans brought to the Caribbean when they came, when the French came and the English came mm -hmm. to fight for the Caribbean. Right. So right, the Shakespeare right. Mass stayed in Caraco. There is not on Grenada. Right. You will get it in Caraco. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to, um, again, I speak to people, the, the, the culture is being, is being pushed. People are hearing about and getting educated about you know jab jab culture etc um can you name any of the other um traditional mass characters of uh grenada or karaku for the people oh, yeah. who don't know because there, there are others definitely. and definitely. and people you know people some people just don't know yeah well as i say the shakespeare mass is shakespeare karaku alone has it right now okay and then they have the veco which is french veco yeah okay. veco is french and then they have the short knees I've heard uh, about the short knees. Yeah. They 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 wear the colorful costume. Colorful um, costume with the little bells. Yes. So when they when they stamp in the streets, you can hear the bell chiming, ching ching. Okay, ching. okay. It's, it's it's awesome. The vehicles was the ones that they send out. As the, that was the soldiers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So they come out fierce. Right, they come right, be right. hitting the road and ha doing everything in a in a in a in a warrior manner. Right. Yeah, right. So right. That, so okay. they, those are you can get those. So Saint Marks Saint Marks has the vehicle. Okay. They have a big Veco band. Okay. Guav has Veco, so definitely it's not. Guav, ha okay, yeah, okay. So it's, it's not just the jab jab. It's not just jab. It's not just jab jab not at all. Right. So um, you're going to be le leaving. Is it to is it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow morning. Um, when is the next time we're gonna we're gonna see you here in here in London, man? But hopefully soon, because um, after last night, you know, I, I already had some calls in. Okay, good. So good. definitely, I won't come back too soon. <laughs> <laughs> you got you yeah yeah you have, yeah you you wet us and then you yeah okay, I, I have Karaku I have a big focus on Karaku right now yes Carnival and my my prime studio is based in Karaku right Export Productions they they are one of the they are probably the best soca producers we have in the entire world right now okay, okay. and then we have Mashworks Productions so definitely I have a lot to work with yeah and then the track and field season has started the so, athletics okay yeah, okay I, I'm the the main coach for the club and. Those kids that I have, as I say, genuinely top talent in the world in the age class. So not just top talent in Grenada or the mm -hmm. Caribbean. Mm -hmm. They're top talent in the in the world in the age class. Okay. So that we're taking that very seriously as well. So as an artist, um, your name's out there. Um, you're well known. Do you get a lot of attention from the ladies out there as a result of you be you know you being such a well known person? Oh, definitely. And I, I mean, I think it's it's not only like. Me being an artist, I think it's the type of music I sing, yes. the groovy music, mm -hmm. and I, I got a lot of inspiration from the ladies. Okay. So I don't take it as, you know, like, oh, a lot of ladies coming, a lot of ladies coming. I take it like, oh, I love to be around them. Yeah. So because I take all the inspiration. Mm -hmm. The things they say to me, I use it in my music. The, thing, the things they might do, I use it in my music. Yeah. Yeah. So I always want them. So when they come around, I don't try to frown them off or try to, to bash some and, and let some be close up. Now, nah, make mm -hmm. everybody be close up, be happy with everybody, smile, you know, because that's, the ladies just need to know that you're there as a genuine person, mm -hmm. not only as an artist. Um, do you think, and it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, that 
that that change that you spoke about before where you decided to, to take things seriously as opposed to just yeah. enjoying the lifestyle yeah, a bit too much? Before you get, got to my head, yeah. you know, it was all about the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using them to, to the best of my ability. Right. Yeah, so now, right. you know, with, I guess with experience, you know, yeah, and yeah. learning to know that you can't have everything, you know. The guys have to have everything to encourage the guys in the crowd to, you know, to be, be the ones the lady want to go after. Yes. As well, definitely. It's been a fantastic interview. Um, before we close off, I just want to give you the chance to let people know where they can find you, where they can follow what you're doing and what you're involved in, and um, where they can get hold of your, your music. Yeah, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm a social media guy. So definitely YouTube, you can get all my music. Facebook, you can get me sometimes. Most of the times, I'm the one behind the Facebook page. So yes, ladies, I'm the one behind the page most of the times. <laughs> Instagram, and all of those are at ShotPre. Twitter, everything, at Short Pre or Short Pre and Jews, you can get me, definitely. I have some new songs out 2017 on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Go out there, export productions, you can subscribe. Subscribe to Carnival Network, and definitely you're gonna get a lot more from Short Pre, a lot more from Soca Music, a lot more from the Caribbean. So I hope you've enjoyed the, the um, interview. Uh, this is Garvey Campbell with... Three-time Groovy Monarch out of Grenada, Carrick One, Pity Manic, Short Pre, and we right here on the Soka Sofa Carnival Network. If you like this interview, like, share, comment, subscribe to us on YouTube, hit that little bell icon so that you can be reminded and, and you know made aware of any new videos that we've got coming out. Make sure you follow us on social media. Check out the website, carnivalnetwork.co.uk. We hope you've enjoyed it. You are watching Carnival Network on the Soka Sofa, and we'll see you next time. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Carnival Network, on Twitter at Carnival Net, and check out our website, carnivalnetwork.co.uk.